Good morning. good morning. It's good to see you all here and that we can come together and worship our Lord. Um, a warm word of welcome for each one of you. It's always good to have you here. If you are relatively new at Good Shepherd or perhaps not been here before, please stop me in the uh, narthex after church for one of these gift bags. There are some things inside of there that you might enjoy. So please uh, stop after the service and, and give, give me a shout. Um, I would like to, <clears throat> to thank, thank you again for being here. Um, we will be coming to a Holy Communion service today, a time in which we can um, receive the bread and the wine. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all of our sins and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us now take a brief moment to confess our sins silently in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. <clears throat> By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Please stand for the gathering song, which is What a Fellowship, What a Joy Divine, ELW 774.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Kyrie eleison is found in the front of the Cranberry Hymnal, page, pages 203, and then the Hymn of Praise, page 204. in unison the prayer of the day as printed on your bulletin. Let us pray. O oh God, through suffering and rejection, you bring forth our salvation, and by the glory of the cross, you transform our lives. Grant that for the sake of the gospel, we may turn from the lure of evil, take up our cross, and follow your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated, and the choir will share, Will You Come and Follow Me at this time?
morning scripture will be read by Julie Forder. Good morning. The first lesson today is from Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 through 9a. The image of the servant of the Lord is one of the notable motifs in the book of Isaiah. Today's reading describes the mission of the servant, whom early Christians associated with Jesus. Like Jesus, the servant does not strike back at his detractors, but trusts in God's steadfast love. <clears throat> the Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning, he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The second lesson is from the book of James, chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. This text uses various images to illustrate how damaging and hurtful the way we speak to and about others can be. Not only are we to control our speech, but what we say and how we say it is to reflect our faith. As I was reading this lesson today, I was thinking about being a mentor and how we try so hard to um, show our mentees how they can live every day in their faith, and I think this text really speaks to that. The reading. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes is speaking in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a wor world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species, but no one can tame the tongue a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it, we bless the Lord and Father, and with it, we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives, or a grapevine, figs. No more can salt water yield fresh. The end of the reading. The gospel acclamation is found in the front of your red hymnal, page 205.
Holy Gospel according to Mark, the seventh chapter, the eighth chapter. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villagers of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, So who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. And he asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all of this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. So he called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated, and I would invite the children to come forward for a children's message. have you all here today. We're going to do a who am I question today, okay? I'm going to give you some ideas and then if you know the answer, raise your hand. All right? Pretty simple, huh? Okay. The first one for the who am I says, I was a tax collector. The second line for this person says, I cheated people out of their money. The next clue says, I was a very, very, very small man. Another one says, I might be found up in the tree. Anybody ever remember a song that goes like, Zacchaeus was a wee little man. Aha, hands go up. So that's Zacchaeus. So that's kind of the way it's going to go. Okay, the next clue says, I was a young woman who found favor with God. I was chosen to do something very great. Whenever you have an, a, an idea, let me know. I was visited by an angel at Christmas time. I became the mother of God's only son. Who would that be? Yes. Mary. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Next one. The next, who am I? I was my father's favorite son. Anybody raising their hand yet? Jesus. That would be an, a really good answer. And, and then we'll do another one that's, <laughs> that has the same, same, not same answer, but same clues. Okay? But that is very true. Jesus. Um, another one. My brothers hated me. 
My brothers sold me as a slave, and I wore a coat of many colors. Maybe somebody out there knows the answer. Jo Joseph, yes, yeah. Okay, here's another one. I am just a little shepherd boy. I like to play the harp. You have an answer yet? Sheep? That would be a good answer because he's a shepherd boy. That's very good. Um, now this one says, I was pretty good with my slingshot. And I became famous for killing a great giant in the Bible. Say it again. Isaiah? That would be an answer. Yeah. Um, David is the one I was kind of thinking of. You know, that's the thing. When you come to the Bible, there's a lot of right answers in all of the books, aren't there? Yeah. Okay. Um, some people thought I was a great teacher. Some people even thought that I was John the Baptist. Some people thought that I was one of the prophets. And the final clue is, I am God's son. Jesus, that's right. So each one of us can tell the story of Jesus. No matter where we are, no matter where we live, we can always tell the story of Jesus to others. And that's a wonderful story to share with others. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, I give you thanks for each of these, these boys and girls here today who are telling the story. Help us all to tell the story of your great love. In Jesus' name, we pray together. Amen. Would you like to get the basket and pass it down? And everybody can take one piece. And as soon as you have your, your little treat, oh, and I need to get you a, a Bible book. As soon as you have your Bible book and your candy, you can go back and sit with your family. Here you go. There you go. Here's your Bible book. What's your Bible book? There you go. Did you pick the right color? <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Who do people say that I am? Jesus asks his disciples what people are saying about him. And the twelve report, well, some say that you are John the baptizer, and others think that you just might be Elijah. Yet others consider that you could be a prophet, seeing as one hasn't been around for a number of years. These are all replies that Jesus might have expected to hear. So it really wasn't names that Jesus is interested in. Rather, what is it that people see as his position? Do those who have witnessed his ministry see him as a man of power? If so, what does this power look like? So Jesus turns, looks to his disciples directly in the eye with the question, And you, what are you saying about me? Who am I? I think Jesus sees the value in hearing these disciples speak for themselves. And when we think about it, we realize that we aren't too much different than those disciples. 
Think of how when we are faced with a question, our response begins with, well, a lot of people have told me, and then they go on. And we report that it is what we really think. When I was teaching school during the winter months, I would have always have one reporter who would come to me regularly and say, Miss Roberts, all of us think that we shouldn't have any homework tonight. And the request was usually on the day of the big basketball game or maybe during a wrestling meet. But I was pretty certain that not all of us had plans to go to the game or the meet that evening. You see, it is our human nature to hope that our report, if spoken on behalf of many, will hold much more authority. But that's not so. We are to be speaking for ourselves. So Jesus asks these disciples, but who do you say that I am? And later in our service, we will answer Jesus when we confess our, our faith using those words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. Each day in our words and our actions, we tell Jesus who he is. We are each to speak for ourselves. And so it is with Peter, who now stands up to the plate and speaks for himself and hits the answer right on the nose. You are the Christ, he says. You are the Messiah. Peter's confession speaks worlds of hope. You see, he, like other Jews, had long awaited this Messiah, one that they believed would, who would be a royal king, one who would assume power. Perhaps Jesus understands that even though Peter gives the right answer, this disciple doesn't have a clue what the future holds for Jesus. So Jesus shares that the day will come when he must suffer. He will be tried and found guilty by the elders, high priests, and religious scholars. He will be killed and then rise again on the third day. And then Peter says, no, 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 no. We cannot know for sure all that was running through the mind of those disciples, but I think it's safe to assume that they wonder what this actually is going to mean to them. They have followed this man, Jesus, for almost three years. Now what? If Jesus faces persecution, will they too face suffering by guilt of association? Should they really continue to follow him? Can they handle what will be expected of them? Jesus quickly interrupts those disciples' thoughts with this command to Peter. Get behind me, Satan. You see, Jesus wants the twelve along with us today to clearly understand what discipleship means. He leaves no question when he speaks these words. Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me take the lead. You see, you are not in the driver's seat. I am, Jesus says. Keep your eyes focused on me. You cannot have things your way. So set your ways aside. Instead, you will follow me and my way. As if it weren't clear enough, Jesus then spells out exactly what is expected of us, his disciples, what is required of those who wish to follow Jesus. You will deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow Jesus. Jesus leaves no room for ambiguity. He wants us to be crystal clear. So he says, deny yourself. This is hardly a, a, 
a congru incongruence with today's living in American society, where we hear that fast food commercial, you deserve a break today. And then we see on some of those shirts, the athletic company puts out a large swoosh and the words to just do it. Society tells us we owe it to ourselves to do exactly what we want. Yet in the midst of these secular voices, Jesus breaks in and says, deny yourself. Jesus wants us to understand that it is not just about me, my interests, and what I want to do. Denying ourselves finds us putting Jesus at the center of our lives. Maybe we're a little bit like Peter, concerned how denying ourselves will change our lives and what it might cost us. Then Jesus asks us to pick up our cross. Understand that when Jesus spoke these words, the cross in those days was not a religious symbol, the type that you would wear around your neck. The cross is what the worst of criminals carried and then died on as punishment for their crime. That is the death that Jesus faced. So when Jesus told these disciples to carry a cross, they fully understood the hardship and suffering that awaited them. But they, like we, prefer the good and the happy times. We don't want to think of suffering. A good example of that is how few attend Good Friday worship when it's compared to the large number who celebrate the resurrection here in church on Easter Sunday. But there cannot be an Easter Sunday without a Good Friday. Jesus especially understood that. Resurrection, new life, comes only after picking up the cross. And then we hear Jesus say, follow me. This can be a challenge for us as well as our egos. Jesus says, give me the right of way and yield your control. Now that's tough for us today. We like to think that we know what's best. But when we follow Jesus, we let Jesus be first and foremost in our lives. We are no longer the ones in first place. We release our need to control. Our human nature gets in our ways sometimes when we think that we are the ones in control. The late Leonard Bernstein, a celebrated orchestra conductor, when asked, what is the hardest instrument that you know of to play? He replied without any hesitation, second fiddle. And then he continued, I can always get plenty of first violinists, but it's so hard to find one who enthusiastically plays second violin or second flute or second French horn. We don't ever want to be second best. Does that sound like us? We don't like to play second chair in life. We prefer to be leaders. But today we learn that in our discipleship, Jesus is the leader. Jesus asks his disciples to deny themselves, pick up their crosses, and follow him. We can do this, not because of our abilities, but by allowing God to work through us. Living a life of discipleship finds us following Jesus, the one who did suffer, the one who was crucified. But that is not the end of his story. We hear the great promise that through the resurrection, Jesus conquered death for you and for each one of us here today. Thanks be to God for such a wonderful promise. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing together, Lift High the Cross, hymn number 660.
Let us recite the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated at this time. We will have our offering where we have a chance to give back to God a portion of what he has given us. Then after that, the uh, offertory response, the song of the month, we've come this far by faith, the refrain only, and you re may remain seated for that. It's ELW 633.
may remain seated or kneel for the prayers of the day. <coughs> As disciples of Christ, called to love and serve all people, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Lord, you are the Messiah. Grant us the willingness and courage to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow you for the sake of the gospel. Thank you for the faithful brothers and sisters in Bogota, Colombia, the Central Diocese in Tanzania, along with our partner congregation, Kim Bale Lutheran of Tanzania. Grant safe travels to the Lofstroms as they travel to Wells. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, we ask your leadership on all churches in this area, including Trinity Lutheran in Ostrander, Shiloh Lutheran in Elmore, Trondheim Lutheran in Lonsdale, and Zion Lutheran in Lake Crystal. Lord, in your mercy. God of justice, you are gracious and righteous. We ask your hand of safety over those who serve in the military, including J.B. Wilner, Mike Kaufman, Jared Detloff, Josh Hansen, Danielle Hipper, Logan Maticola, Jared Billings, Brandon Ressler, Alex Raymaker, Kevin Stern, Mitch Meyer, Eric Trepto, Joshua Kaufman, Mike Maul. Hear the voices of all who cry out to you for an end to violence and warfare, hatred and racism, hunger and homelessness. Lord, in your mercy. God, you are full of compassion. Bring hope and healing to those who are grieving, lonely, anxious, or sick, especially Shannon Royce, Jan Helfritz, Stu Fullerton, John Musser, Gary Salisbury, Sabrina Bushlock, Arlene Siglowski, Bill Niebuhr, and those we name silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Abiding Spirit, you are the love that binds this assembly into the body of Christ. May our words and deeds be a faithful witness to you. Risen Christ, you have rescued our life from death. May we continue to walk in your presence with all the faithful who have gone before us until that day when you come again in glory. Today we remember the friends and family of Sheldon Estes as they mourn his death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers, faithful God, and renew us by your spirit that we may joyfully love and serve you and one another through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. At this time, we'll have the sharing of the peace. You may rise and uh, circulate a little bit.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God, for the good of the world. Please be seated and the usher will direct you forward when it is time for you to receive communion. If you prefer grape juice rather than wine, please take the grape juice from the front of the silver trays. Come for all is ready.
Let us pray. Gracious God, in this meal you have drawn us to your heart and nourished us at your table with food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Now send us forth to be your people in the world and to proclaim your truth this day and evermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please stand for God's benediction. The Lord blesses you and keeps you. The Lord's face shines on you and is gracious to you. The Lord looks upon you with favor and grants you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. A reminder <clears throat> that coffee and goodies will be served in the social hall. And also this morning is the first adult Bible study on modern parables. That is downstairs also. Please plan to attend. The ascending song, Rejoice, Ye Pure in Heart, ELW 873.